drive on. Oh, hang on, let's take you out the tuna. <laughs> Studio in my house at the minute, anyway. Um, just doing, we're doing a track, aren't we? We're doing for a show, and we've got to do "Take Me On" by Aha and "Take On Me" and "Take On Me." <laughs> <laughs> and we spent so much time with the track, and I don't even, don't even know what it's called. So, if you've heard the original, which I'm pretty sure you would have, there's not a whole lot of guitar in it. I don't think. Is there any guitar in it at all? Yeah, there is. There's some acoustic, and um, I think there's a couple of other little bits, but they're quite low in the mix. And when you hear them, they're actually like, like the acoustics kind of out there, um, oh, okay. but you don't... I'll have to have a re-listen. Yeah, you don't notice it. The way it's mixed, it's like really far in... Well, it's not far in the back, but it's well mixed. Right. Gotcha. So, we need to build something a bit more guitar friendly. Um, so, we're just writing parts really. Between Ben and I, we've, we've come up with a couple of things and... Yeah, I think it's working. So it's, you, know, you know, we're trying to make it more exciting for live, um, and try and drive it with the guitar a bit, but without treading all over the nice keyboard production parts. And on that note, we'll probably do a video at some point where I'll make Ben do a video of um, what he's done to get the production noises um, for this, how he's built them. And you've, you've actually done it in Logic, right? Yeah, um, I did it in Logic. What I do is I usually take if we have to do something um, either for an artist or some, if someone's been playing for an artist and they want a song by another artist in the set or, or if there's something something odd happening or fun happening in a show or it could be a party band thing or whatever, sometimes I'll make stems for them and I'll take the original track and then rebuild it but I have to make all the, the sounds individually. Um, as authentic as possible. Yeah, because the last thing you want is well, you you want to sound like the real thing. Yeah, exactly. Sound only right. better if you can. Yeah, only better, like vibe. Yeah, better and more exciting if you can. Absolutely, because we're you know especially if we're competing with a DJ. Yeah, we've got to make everyone want live music and not DJs. Not that DJs don't have their place, but you know this benefits us, and we're gonna we're gonna try and make it as exciting as possible. The other thing is once you you find a lot of people that want to spend money and want to do loads of. Um, get loads of different plugins and use lo buy loads of synths and stuff but you find once you know how to use synths um, which isn't always the most natural thing for a guitar player to do but there's loads of great videos to learn how to do it and books and I still remember books so know the um, let's have a listen to those uh, some of those sounds on their own or a couple of them grouped together that you've you've well I did a backing track for our drummer to play along to um, yeah so <laughs> So most of that stuff is all used done using the logic sounds and synths, but um, I'll either build something from scratch or I'll take something and adjust it and then I use obviously like the kind of sort of same production tools that anyone else would do like reverbs and delay and EQing and stuff but yeah so from that you can make some pretty convincing stuff because that's all anyone's using just synth to synth. Mm. No it sounds awesome because I, I probably would have immediately gone being being that I'm I'm I guess not nearly as, as much into the production side as you know, I spend my time burying myself in things like the Axe FX, um, which I'll again probably do some more in depth stuff on at some point. And Ben is well and truly head head first into the production stuff. So I, being the way I am, I probably would have just looked online for a, a plugin to shortcut me to those synths rather than doing it the proper way, which is to try and you know bury head in learning the synths and how to use them, and then you know ultimately create these sounds yourself, which is a much better idea, I think, in the long run. Interestingly, it's the opposite to something you said the other day. We were talking about samples, and mm -hmm. Neil was talking about like just having a few samples so that you don't have to flick through them. But the same thing kind of works with synths. Like, if you yeah. have loads and loads of patches, 
then you got to flick through millions of them. Whereas if you know have like a DX7 kind of bell synth or a big saw synth or whatever, and you know where it is and where to find it, or like a really good sine wave, subby sine thing, you can work off that. Um, so sometimes, yeah, just no, knowing knowing the the how to use synths and how to use envelopes and all that is quite helpful. I'm pretty good with envelopes. That's like, I'll good. Place, place stuff off. And yeah. Yeah, I'm completely with you there, man. Wicked. Um, so yeah, we've messed around with the Axfex, and um, if you haven't, or if you don't know about the Axfex by Fractal Audio, it's worth a look. Um, it, there's still a, a, a lot of people that, you know, you're gonna get your purists that say, you know, proper valve amps are the, the way I wasn't the sure way. about it, man. I yeah, wasn't well, sure so about many, it. Yeah, well, it's like everyone I've, I've been, you know, showing this to, and it was the same when I, I wasn't, a believer until a friend of mine, a good, good mate of mine, had one and said, "Come over to mine and you know play." It. And he actually let me take it away for a, for a couple of days, and that was it. I was I was sold. It really is awesome, and I think compared to some of the other the other things like the, some of the Line Six stuff, um, you know, Line Six make make some great stuff, but the way they model amps doesn't really come close to the you know the, the methods in which they choose to. You know, we could geek out on this for ages. It's not the point of this video, but. Yes, the Axfex is absolutely killer. Neil so likes it. Yeah, big stamp for approval. So we've we've made a couple of sounds up, which we're really happy with. Nice, nice valvey kind of fendery sounds. Maybe a little warmer than a. Yeah, it, it, and also it, it records better. But I'd say that it records when you use um, guitar plugins and stuff. Um, there's some really good ones, and we all use them. All the time. This is the first time I've used this thing. <laughs> it's really good. It's like it's really good. And because um, I think I've I've used all. The, I was desperate. I'm a huge, huge techno geek, and I was really desperate for that plugin to come along. Where it was like, okay, that's changed the game. Awesome. I can record with that, no problem. And they have got to the point where you can kind of get away with it. And if stuff be stuff's buried in the mix, I've done it on record. I've got yeah. I'm on record. Yes, yeah, so I right. absolutely. You know, chuck stuff down using. You know, I've used. Uh, God, I can't remember the name of it now. Um, it'll come to me. But yeah, there's one. I've used the waves one. one. It's good. I haven't used the waves. That's one. really good. I've used that. On we both used guitar rig, and we've, we've yeah. used that a bunch. Um, and I think you initially demoed this with those. Yeah, I did. Guitar yeah. Rig. Um, oh, I can't remember the name of the one. I've I was using quite recently but yeah um, there's just something in you know the response rolling off the guitar volume how the you know how you expect a valve amp to respond to you know physical volume changes on the guitar things like that that are just and especially as you start getting anywhere above seventh fret I think a lot of the digital amps start falling over a bit and don't sound very convincing and there's a feel thing there as well and if you're a guitar player you'll, you'll know what I mean so the axe effects just models all that Beautifully. So we've messed around with. Um, I'm not even sure. I think it was a 59 basement or something. We've 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 kind of built on that. And between my uh, 50th anniversary 2004 model Strat with the uh, the noises Kimman pickups and your USA Strat, is it with a with a yeah a, yeah it's a standard with a hack bridge that you've a uh, bridge pickup you've chucked in there. What was it Seymour Duncan? Yeah, they're. Yeah. So we we've got it to where these are both sounding individual enough, but also close enough where because Ben and I are, are both doing stuff on this, where we're kind of playing to our strengths where we can. I think, and I'll do one bit, Ben will do another bit. But there's uh, going through this same amp, we're getting them close enough to where they kind of you know doesn't sound like there's different guitarists recording in and out of it all the time. But yeah, and we'll although you're hearing this in mono through the mic, we'll uh, we'll cut in a section at the end of the video. So you can hear, uh, you know, hear a nice sample of the mix. You can hear these, uh, the track and the guitar sound. What you're gonna hear, you're gonna hear like a demo mix. So the drums aren't mixed, and because we just got those recorded, kind of based. They, this is we're basically making this for practice, so that people can learn parts. And uh, so it's gonna be rough around the edges, but you'll get the idea. Yeah. So I guess we'll crack on. Yeah. Um, I was gonna say something. Um, so we were looking at parts and stuff for this song like we said Take On Me that's probably really loud um, and there aren't a lot in there so sometimes if you don't want to mash up a track that already exists you find a part to double so this is an example of that so we've got 
we know how the bass goes because I made it. That's what it sounds like in the track. So, um, so, so yeah, we're going to do kind so of we're double with a kind of stratty, funky vibe. kind of vibe. Pretty rough, so we're going to do Lally. Forgive me. My bad. Okay. We don't have to. Do you want to do the whole no, thing? No, just drop it. Because we're lazy. Yeah, 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 we're lazy. Yeah,
the two parts, parts. Yeah, the parts following, and then we've got this section which is our little which we did earlier, and I think we've probably we've covered it all now, but we should probably show you anyway, which is this kind of it's got a bit of a police vibe to it, isn't it? The uh, the clean kind of funky guitar part. Where's that earlier in the track? Um, it is. What's the section? Um, yeah, this part. And then we're into doubling the bass. Yeah, that's cool. So we've we've kind of created uh, a, a show guitar part for this uh, for someone to learn, and, and we've got you know get the guitarist doesn't have to stand around twiddling their thumbs too much during this song now. And I think it sounds quite exciting too. I think it's nice uh, a nice lift. Yeah, it's good. Um, makes it all sound um, a bit live. more vibey. Yeah, more live, which is which is all good. So you can you don't have to actually. One of the things that Ben and I both come across as session guitarists is um, I've I mean I'm sure you've had this but where I've been sent you know something like you know there's one artist I work for one or two actually where I've had the, the album track I've had to learn has no guitar in it at all it might be something really uh, you know it might be something quite R&B or, or something which is just all production and keys and quirky noises and there is just no guitar playing on it at all. It happens all the time. Yeah, and at that point you have to take this same approach. But the other thing is there might be, excuse my phone, there might be a, uh, a musical director, well there will be a musical director normally who will have their own idea of what they want you to play. But, uh, you know, when you get to rehearsals, we would take this approach where we'll... we'll you know, get a few ideas, try stuff out, you know, feel a few things out and see what we come up with. And then you've got a few ideas to them play in rehearsal and, you know, usually the MD, the musical director might look at it and go, that's great, do that. Or he might go, can you do that but change this? But at least you kind of hit the ground running when you go in um, to, a, to a rehearsal or, you know. And I, I guess it's the same with, with you know, anything like that. You've, you've got your goal and you've got to... Uh, work our way to get there but I think this is you know our goal is to make this find somewhere for the guitar on this track and make it exciting for, from a live point of view um, and I think this is sounding more exciting so that's good mm. some gravy but the other thing actually just thinking about it the other cool thing for having these kind of things on the backing track system uh, which as I said was is an HD24 in our our situation for the use is, is the fact that um if there's only one guitarist on the gig, and you've got like we did earlier, we we were working on Easy Lover by Phil Collins, and there's a section where you go off and do the solo, and it's obviously the the rhythm guitar part on the record still there going in the background, um, so we recorded that part in as well, so you could actually leave that on the track so that when you go do your guitar solo, the you know the bottom of the rhythm doesn't just fall out, you can have that coming through on the, on the track on the backing track, so you know. It's useful. Yeah, man. It's all good. Man. Great drumming. Here is some good drumming. We're not going to say who it is. His head will go like this. And you can see, you don't have to be in, in the biggest studio in the world. Like Sometimes you'll get called in to work in, in somewhere massive with a, you know, a great desk and all the rest of it. But a lot of, a lot of the monkey work for everything, whether it's like a big tour for a top 40 act or a little party band or whatever, happens on a laptop. In totally. Whatever, and it doesn't matter whether it's Logic or Pro Tools or whatever, it's, you know, it's whatever you know how to use. Um, so that's any, what we're doing any today. Any tool's powerful if you know how to use it. It's a good. What, what's the, I don't know, but sure I like it. It's some old anime film. Anime film. Um, like a Kira. Yeah, or something. No, no, no. Is it 
the fist, fist, fist of North Star. That's the one, yeah. Where his big brother kicks off and. <laughs> Ryak, and what a foolish old man you are. Any tool is useful if you know how to use it. And I've become an expert. I haven't yeah. seen it. Yeah, really? You yeah, I only, so one, I only saw yeah, one. I only saw one anime. Another cool thing, actually, about the Axe Effects is the um, signal to noise ratio, um, which is fantastic because there's, uh, you know, if you're taking a traditional lamp and you've got to worry about, you know, hum and the cable lengths, and are there any lights that are going to cause issues? And there's so much stuff that interacts on the way to the desk. The microphone, the ambient room noise, the uh, you know placement of the speaker. I mean, everything contributes in some way towards bringing the noise floor up against the signal. Um, but with the axe effects, obviously, you have all those things. You still have those options. You have many more options. You can choose your cabs and your mic positions, your mic type. You know, the 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 depth is pretty endless, but it's all contained in that one unit, and all of that's modeled so that the signal is even when you're on quite high gain guitar sounds, uh, where things get noisy, um, it is just so whisper quiet. Which is, you know, and I gig this as well. Uh, it doesn't just live in the studio. I take this out and now use this as my main rig, and it's awesome for that. The front of house guys genuinely love the fact that this thing. There's no sound on stage because that's the other thing. Front of house guys hate guitar amps. They want them all around the back of the stage, facing the other way, mic'd up, because they don't want it interfering with what they're mixing for the crowd. And obviously, Jeez. we love a guitar cab kicking us in the ass and you know playing nice and loud. Um, so when I turned up with this, um, started using this um, for live shows, the front of house guy was was super happy. And so was the tech because it's two cat. You've got two XLRs in the back. You don't even need DI boxes. It's you know balanced straight out the back. Um, and then have you got your own volume for in ears as well? Like you can do. There's two sets of outputs, so you could you could route it so that you have your own independent volume to mess around with. But I we got a really good uh, you know when we're out on the road. We got, got, good got we got a good monitor engineer, which is, you know, the the monitor engineer is a very important person because when you're on in ears and we'll probably do another video about in ears, in ear monitoring, because that's another important thing, especially from the point of looking after your ears in noisy environments. Because everything's getting louder and uh we're hearing if you don't have your hearing, what's the point in any of it? What? You need your ears, right? Pardon? <laughs> yeah, very good. Yeah, it's so dry. <laughs> so dry missed so that dry. straight over my head so yeah yeah there's tons to cover and hopefully we'll we'll get around to covering this stuff but you know if there's something you want us to discuss leave it in the comments and give us lots of likes and make us feel good about ourselves because we're poor musicians trying to scratch a living <laughs> <laughs>